Okay, it's time for our second hot topic. Teachers in Nigeria and world over were yesterday described as destiny molders and life changers for their critical roles in the mental and behavioral development of their pupils and students. Among those who sang their praises yesterday being World Teachers Day was Speaker of the House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas, who noted that teachers or lecturers not only educate but also serve as guardians and mentors to their words in the schools at all levels. The speaker assured teachers of the readiness of the 10th house under his leadership in assisting the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu administration towards the development of the education sector in the country as well as better welfare for workers in the sector. Now we've been joined this morning to discuss this as our second hot topic by Yinka Awobo Pierce. She's the lead consultant, Wooden Tots Consult Limited and proprietor Wooden Tots Nursery School. Good morning to you. Good morning. I saw you nodding your head when I got to the part where he yes. pr promised that they'll fix yes. the welfare situation in the country. Yes. All right, so let's start by talking about where we are right now today mm -hmm. in our education sector in the country. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to appreciate teachers. Um, I want to, yesterday I did give a shout out to all teachers to say that you, it's a tough job, to be honest. It's a mm -hmm. tough job. However, the rewards are immense. Hmm. Because seeing a child go from one, you know, you see a child at the beginning of the session, they come into your classroom, mm -hmm. and then at the end of the session, when they're going, you see that improvement. Yeah. There is no feeling like that. So teaching, to me, is still the best job in the world. It's mm -hmm. the most rewarding. Now, in terms of education in Nigeria, what I have observed is that I believe that Nigeria as a country has not decided what is their education goal? What do they want to achieve with education? Because education is not a means in itself. Mm -hmm. It's a means to an end. It's a means to achieve development for the country. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria as a country has to sit down and decide what are our education goals? What do we want to achieve with education? Is education just going to be just, let's teach children to read and write? Mm -hmm. Literacy is just the base. There's so much more that you can do with education. As we know, education informs development. Hmm. So definitely, I think that with the right thinking government, with putting the right people in the room, we can begin to have that discussion. However, I'm at the point where we have been discussing for so long. We need action. Exactly. We need action. Because the rot has been going on, and we cannot let it continue. Because we, are in the, we have now gone past the fourth industrial revolution. We are now in the AI age. Mm-hmm. And Nigeria is still behind. So we need to begin You to know, work. when you say Nigeria has not yet decided the direction they want to go in terms of education, I found that quite alarming because, as you said, this is the AI revolutionary age. This is 2023. Yes. And then, you know, as we celebrate 63rd anniversary, mm -hmm. back then, mm -hmm. in the golden days, mm -hmm. Nigeria used to have top-notch Education, education sector. sector. People from other parts of Africa, even in Asia, used to come here. Okay. Take us through the changes that we've experienced in this sector. So what, I, what I've observed with education over the years is what has caused this is the lack of funding. So when you withdraw funding from a sector, it becomes to degenerate. And mm. that is what I think has happened. Now, having said that, this is a growing population. Mm. Remember, what population were we in these golden years we're talking about? Now, Nigeria has doubled in population in that time. Mm -hmm. 200 and something million people. And in that 200 and something million people, 40%, 41% of them are 0 to four, 14 years old. School children. Mm -hmm. So to imagine that number, if we do a very quick calculation, 40% of 200 is what, 50 million. And that's huge. I mean, I mean, I mean eight, 80 million. That mm. is a lot. 80 million. To educate 80 million is a lot. I know the Nigerian education system is the, is the whole nine years. That's the basic education everyone must have. Yeah. So if you're going to do that and you have 41% you're trying to, you know, you're trying to, to, to educate, it's a lot. It's a lot. So they really need to look at the funding. I know the United Nations recommend a certain number and all of that. But every country has to decide what is going to work for it. 
That is what I believe. Mm -hmm. That, okay, United States says do 14%, do 18%, do 22%. Yeah. What matters is that every country has to decide what kind of education do we want mm -hmm. and fund that kind of education. Not be, not be guided by, this must be a number. There is no specific in education. Education is that kind of thing that you call, it is not, you know, sometimes they think of it as a sunk cost. It is not a sunk cost. Indeed, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. Because every money you spend in education, although you do not get it back, like, directly, but it is an investment in your country. You are investing people. I'll give you an example. When they do research, when you look at universities, when they do research, sometimes they research things that mean nothing to you and I. Yeah. But look at what happened with the COVID. The people that were doing that research that had absolutely nothing to do with anything, were they, was that research that they now used to determine what the COVID, um, the COVID jabs were going to be? So education is the kind of thing that you just begin, you just invest. It is not something you think about, oh, we have to put in money, we're going to get, you can't, it's not, it can't work that way. And before you see effects of improvement in education, at least 16 years. 16 years. Mm -hmm. At least. A minimum of 16 years. There is no way you invest in it. Think about it, a child goes into primary one at age five. Mm -hmm. By the time that child is 16 years, that's 21. So you cannot see the, the, the effect of investment before that time. So... To be honest, I think we need to think, we really, really need to sit as a country and we strategize our thinking about education. Where do we want to go? If you think about it, the curriculum that we're using now was conceived right after the war, 1969. Mm -hmm. How relevant is this How relevant today? Is that today? How relevant is that thinking? Have we really united Nigeria as we aimed with that curriculum? Is the NYC an effective system? Hmm. We need to really, you know, one thing we have to do as a country is continuous improvement. And mm -hmm. to do that, you have to do reflective thinking. So you have to keep thinking. What is it that we did? That, and how did it, what impact did it have? And how can we make, correct that? How can we improve that mm -hmm. going forward? And that's where we need to be with education, obviously with everything, but particularly with education, because education is at the center yeah. of everything that we're doing. Deeply, deeply at the center. So now we have a new administration mm -hmm. and a new minister. Mm -hmm. From the body languages you've seen, <laughs> would you say there's, 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 there's hope? And being an insider, what are the things you think must be done urgently to reverse this rot, which didn't start 10 years ago, didn't start 20 years, years ago? ago. What are the things I must do urgently to reverse this? So, what I believe is that we have to decide on our own path as a country. So, if we say we want to educate children to be farmers, hmm. then that is how we go forward. I see a lot of positive conversations, a lot of talking, but what we want, as I said, is action. What are, is the new administration going to do? Mm -hmm. Put your money where your mouth is. Definitely. One thing in Nigeria is that if you go look for policies, there are many initiatives that the government, we have so many, we have meetings all the time. We have, you know, meetings and we say, okay, this is our communique, these are the action items. Who are the people responsible for them? Who are the people funding them? Mm. So they don't need to recreate anything. There's nothing to recreate because it already exists. They just need to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, we have all this. What can we do? Let's take the case of out-of-school children. Mm -hmm. It depends on who you are. Some people will say it's 20 million. Some will say it's 10.5 million. We can't even agree on how many out-of-school children we have mm -hmm. and the reasons why they're out of school. Until we have that agreement, how can we prefer a solution? So we don't even have what a template to start working from because we have not agreed and what it is that the issues are. Mm -hmm. So let's agree on the issues. So because if you just, okay, no one comes and says, let's fund children, children are out of school. Is that the issue? Why are they out of school? Why are they out of school? It is not that. Okay, it's not just addressing the symptoms, symptoms but the causes, the causes of these causes problems. Of the problem. Why are they out of school? In the north, principally where we have most of the out of school children, you find out, there was a research that was done. They found out the parents said, when the children go to school, they don't farm. Hmm. So they pull them out of school to go and farm because farming is their livelihood. Should you have a different type of education system in the north, in the north? to meet these needs, so that this the needs. parents can understand that can understand. we are grooming your children to even be better farmers. farmers? Should you have that kind of? 
So having a, a an overall policy for education, has to, we have to think regional. We have to think the needs of every region. For example, the East. I'm sure you've met a lot of Easterners that are, that are entrepreneurs. That's what they do. What kind of education do they need? Mm -hmm. it is, it's like it's in their blood, to be honest. It's, like it's, it's an innate thing for them. What kind of education do you need to prefer for them? What do they need? That is what you do. Education is supposed to meet a need. Literacy is basic. Ability yeah. to read and write is important. In this world we're in, you literally cannot survive without the ability to read and write. And while Nigeria is still not sure of what to do, the Igbo system of apprenticeship exactly. has become a global become example. A exactly. Meanwhile, we're not even harnessing it here at home. Here, here at home. So there are many... We, we are, let, let's just be honest with ourselves. We're a very diverse country. We are. And diversity does not mean different or anything. It just means we appreciate each ethnic group's diversity. And we use that to educate them, to make sure that the children, because ultimately, these are the future. They are the ones going to take Nigeria forward. Mm -hmm. And if we do not do right by them, Nigeria wouldn't move forward. Because you and I are not going to be here forever. We have to hand over the baton. Definitely. And the best way to do that is to make sure that they have the education to do it. Because if you do not have the education, then they can't do it. You know, yesterday when the vice president was talking, uh, you know, about all of this, celebrating teachers and talking about, and you said talk is cheap, they've been talking, not be today. However, some of the things he, 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 he highlighted, which are true, is the fact that uh, there are issues with manpower. There are issues with, you find out sometimes the teachers, the people you have as teachers are those who couldn't get employment in other sectors <laughs> of the society. And so it becomes a last resort. Yeah. How do they make it attractive? So that qualified people, people who love teaching, who are excited about, about molding young ones, will be the ones in that sector. Let's talk about the welfare. So, one of the reasons, I'm sure, I don't know if you're aware, that 30% of teachers leave their jobs in the first five years. Hmm. And the main reason is actually not just remuneration, it's stress. Because teaching hours are long hours. Mm. They come in early to welcome the children, and they stay later to look at the children's work, mark it, prepare for the next day. Mm -hmm. So stress, of course, remuneration is important. However, you find out that if people are valued, if people are valued, then there is a balance in remuneration. Yeah. So even if you cannot pay them top dollar, but you show them that you really value them. Nigerian teachers are not valued. Nigerian teachers are not respected. You are now remember how our teachers were like the gods. Whatever they said, even our parents could not question them. What's happening in Nigeria today? And it's just not in Nigeria, it's all over the world. That's what is happening. So it's a so global problem. It is a global problem. Why is that? that? What has theme, happened? The theme of this year's um, what does is the teachers we need for the education we want. Yeah. And it says the global imperative to reverse the teacher shortage. So it is not a, it's not just in Nigeria that we have this problem. We have the problem all over the world. So it's about valuing the teachers appreciating them for the work that they do mm. every day. So how do you value someone, you ask me? It is in the way you treat them. Remuneration, yes, that's one step. But actually valuing them, treating them with respect. Definitely there are people in the system that have abused that respect yeah. over the years, which has caused the disrespect. But once you begin to address that, then you see a change. It will attract the people you're looking for. Now, let's talk about attracting the teachers. When I interview teachers, you know what they say? They gave me education. None of them come in and say, I chose education as, as a, a, course, in as a course in school. They gave me education. Hmm. The jam pass mark, guess what the jam pass mark for College of Education is? What? 100 over 400. That is 25%. That's the lowest. How are you putting your lowest IQ into teaching, and you expect a system that is going to be excellent. Wow. 100 over 40, that's 25%. Hmm. Now, I'll give you a scenario. I'll, I'll say, you look at Finland, we talk about Finland a lot. Finland has a fantastic education system. Yes, yeah, it's a very small country, 5.5 million people. But you know, to be a teacher in, in Finland, you have to be top of your class. Mm -hmm. 
you also have to have a master's degree before you can teach elementary school in Finland. And it's a whole holistic thing. Teachers are paid equally as doctors. They are treated with respect in the society. And the whole country regards education as important. So, you know, it's... A, it, it, How it, did it, we drop this ball? Really? How did we drop this ball? Because even though, yes, our population has doubled. But where did we drop the ball? Where did the standards start falling? Where it appears... What we have is the opposite of what's happening in Finland, yes. where the worst of us are the teachers. Teacher. Sometimes the worst of us are our leaders. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I say nothing. <laughs> so, where did we drop the ball? To be honest with you, nobody can put a point and say, this is where we dropped the ball. It's a gradual degeneration of the system. And it started with lack of funding, losing the value system. Once we stopped regarding education as something that is critical to the growth of the country, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, these things are subtle. It's not usually on the surface. Yeah. And that's why we have to be very careful the body language we pass on to people. So you say you value someone, but in your body language, you don't value them. That was why I asked you the body the language, language you've seen of this administration and the new minister. Well, I have only heard him speak once. Okay. So to be honest, I cannot make a judgment on that. Mm -hmm. But the, the body language definitely. They, I mean, they're saying the right things. They're doing, you know, talking the talk. Mm -hmm. How have governments over the years, how have governments interfaced with those in the sector in making some of these changes? Mm. So you find out that a lot of times they make these decisions without the input of the teacher. You know that teaching is not a, is not a professional, it's a professional job in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Teaching is a trade job. Really? Yes. Wow. The NUT is a trade. It is not considered a professional. Amazing. Yes. So when you look at people, and you know, this young Gen, Gen, Gen Z, they want to do certain things. They mm -hmm. want to be professionals. So when you tell them they're going to teach, you're not a professional, they won't take the job. They won't even go into it. But why is it that, why is it categorized as a trade job? Ask me. Considering that education is one of the oldest professions. Professions. Without educators, there'll be no lawyers. There'll be no doctors. There'll be no professors. How organized is the teacher's union? With everything in Nigeria, you see a lot of people at the top talking, but you don't see the bottom up. You don't see people down, you know, like having a voice mm -hmm. and having input into what is going on in the leadership. So we have a big country, which is why I think it has to be regional kind of thinking. So we have a very massive country. Number one, to even read the rural areas, you know that education is the highest employer in Nigeria. Education is the highest. It should be. It is. I think it is about 40-something percent that education, women in education are about 40-something percent of the workforce of women in Nigeria. So if you are not reaching those people, you are not asking their opinion. You are not asking them what is happening in the classroom. And how can we make it and better? And how can we make it better? But you bring out this new rule and you say, do this. You remember the issue of the history. Did they ever explain to us why they pulled history from the classroom? I Never. One keeps wondering why. Why? Did they also explain to us why they brought it back? We don't know. There has to be a conversation. And the only way you can make an improvement in any sector is by talking to the boots on the ground. Who are the people doing the job? What are the issues affecting you? What is it that you need for us to do? I'm sure you've heard of teachers going on strike all over the world. Mm. It is not just a problem in Nigeria is that the leadership of even the teachers' union are not really talking to the people, the boots on the ground, the people that are lifting the heavyweights. They need to talk to them. They need to ask them. So the it's, it's a multifaceted problem. So definitely. you have the government angle, and then you have the teachers themselves the being a part of the problems. Now, how, how are we preparing our future in terms of technology, AI, information technology? Because that's the, age, that's the stage where we are now. How are you, your body, Preparing the future leaders for what's ahead. So uh, I want to 
say that the private schools in Nigeria are doing a lot of work in that area. They're making sure the children have access to AI. They're able to use technology. They are digitally literate. So that is going on. And remember, it's changing so rapidly as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to be dynamic in your thinking, in your approach to learning. Look at what happened with the COVID. We all went home. And guess what? Schools went online within two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Nobody, and nobody, it. yeah, nobody understood it. And nobody appreciated that. Are you sure? Mm. When I say publicly acknowledge that that was a feat in itself that they achieved mm -hmm. so quickly. Within three weeks, a lot of schools were online. So I believe that a lot of the private schools in Nigeria are doing a lot in that sector. Mm -hmm. And I think the government, I'm not, I don't have the statistics. I know that in Lagos State, they are doing something with the public schools. The extent of that, I cannot speak to because I'm not a government official. Yeah. However, I have heard that they are doing things. But a lot of the AI, the private schools are doing that. Now, you ask me, what is the percentage of private to public school? Hmm. So you're talking about 40-something to 50-something percent. So we still have a deficit. Definitely. We do, still do have a deficit. But it is an expensive step. So I think that is what the government is doing. Now, I'm going to be radical and say, must we be on the AI trend? If we can't afford it for now, can we not do something that works for us? China as a country decided that agriculture was going to be central to it before it went into technology. Hmm. And guess what? At 1.4 billion, they are feeding their country and exporting food. Mm. You, are, you educate for what you need. Yeah. If you're not ready for AI, if it's only a few people that are going to be doing AI, it is fine. Everybody does not have to be on the AI wagon. We can have people doing just normal things. Normal literacy, how to do this, education and how to do that. We can have them doing that. And all of that can be what we're educating children for. So definitely, I don't think there's is the one, one path to success. I think it's whichever way the government decides to move forward. Whichever way the, teacher, uh, the government decides to move forward. But then it is very critical that we know where the government is going. It is very critical that those of you in the sector are carried along. Yes. It's also very critical that those of you in the sector organize yourselves in such a way that you are strategic. Hmm. Collaboration. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we struggle with. I think there's too much competition that we are not, we are not aware that we are not collaborating. Mm. And the competition is driven by I want all these pupils to come to my school instead of thinking about the greater good. So that is for the teachers. Mm. We need to collaborate more. We need to do more because through collaboration is how growth happens. Yeah. One person doing small work in this sector is not going to change Nigeria. We have to work together to make bigger circles so that we can have a bigger impact. Indeed. 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 Right. And uh, your rewards, teachers' rewards, still here, uh, hopefully in heaven. You, you've talked about how the, the pleasure of seeing those who you molded from little to, you know, zero to 15, 16 is, is such a deep one. However, your rewards. You still want them here? And how do you want them? You Quickly, to, before we wrap you up. You need to feed yourself. So you still need to get paid. <laughs> so you still need to get paid. However, you need to get paid right. Mm. Because if you get paid right, then you will be inspired to do the work. But if your pay is so little, it's like if you ask someone to come to the bank, to come and work. You see how they want to go and work. Definitely. Yes, but if you ask them to come and work as a teacher, they'll be dragging their feet. So that should be part of the starting point. Yes, the enumeration. So that you can attract the bright minds to, the bright to mind teach. And thank you so much. Thanks. Yinka Awobo Pierce, thank you so much. It's been so good having you on the program. Yinka Awobo Pierce is a lead consultant, Wooden Tot Consult Limited, and proprietor, Wooden Tot Nursery School. Happy Teacher's Day to you in our areas if you're a teacher watching. We appreciate you, we love you, and we say kudos to you that you can do better, as she has just you know, informed us. That's the much we have for you on the program today and indeed the week. Do join us on Monday for more on Plus TV. I am Maureen Menongwizuga, and on behalf of the team, I say thank you for being there, and do have a great day. <laughs>